What's going on, everybody? I'm Max Kellerman, and welcome to this just in a fast paced look around the world of sports and how I see it. We start in the NFL. This will be the last time you see only one team get possession of football in overtime in the postseason, according to Adam Schefter. The NFL owners have approved a modification in the overtime rules in the playoffs, but not in the regular season. Jeff Darlington is with me now from the owners' meeting in Boca Raton. Jeff, what more can you tell us about this rule change and how it came about? Well, Max, there were two major considerations under review the past couple of days here as it pertained to this overtime rule. The first of which was the two different proposals, one of which got approved, and that is the one that you get the chance to match if someone scores a touchdown. The other one was put on the table by the Titans. That would have meant that if you scored a touchdown and then you got a two-point conversion, you win the game without the other team matching. Ultimately, the competition committee took that one off the table and just presented to the owners the one I mentioned previously. But here's the, the perhaps biggest surprise of this ultimate rule proposal being passed. It only pertains to the postseason, and it won't be implemented during the regular season. And this is why. The data behind the decision, there have been 12 overtime playoff games under the rules implemented since 2010. Now, the team to win the coin toss won 10 of the 12 games. And that's really the big stat that everybody was kind of looking at here. And ultimately the reason why so many of the owners ended up voting in favor of it. Only three owners decided against it. And that meant it was approved and it will be implemented this coming season. Thank you, Jeff. Super Bowl champion Jeff Saturday. and Resident GM Mike Tenenbaum with me. Mike Good rule change? Absolutely. I'm not a fan. Excellent Listen, rule Mike, change. You, you, oh, oh, no, he's Mike. Oh. You're Jeff. I said Mike. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> good to see you, by the way. I haven't seen Jeff in a minute. Mike, is it a good rules change? That's a. Well, what, one of the rules we have is five yards for a false start at number 63. So let's get that clear. <laughs> but as it relates to the rule, as it relates to the rule, it's really good. As Jeff alluded to, 10 out of 12 games were decided by who won the coin toss. Nobody wants that. And as fans of the sport, let's go back to what really was the impetus. Kansas City Buffalo playing that epic game. Kansas City gets the ball in overtime, they score. Every one of us wanted to see what would Josh Allen have done with the ball in overtime in Kansas City. And I think when they're making, quarterbacks are making upwards of 45 million or more, we want to see the stars of the sport play, especially in overtime in postseason. Jeff, I what were you champing at the bit to say? Because normally you got something to say, but boy, if, if you go and I say, Mike, this, 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 is, this is probably world changing. What do you think? Well, I had, some, I had somebody in my ear, so I, when I heard Jeff, I assumed that was me. So I had, I had a little mix up. It's all good, though. Uh, yeah. And listen, here's the reality of this, right? We had a team that, that the whole thing got set up because of Buffalo, Kansas City. I understand it. Heaven forbid that the Bills played good defense and, and you know, in, in, in the end of the game, we would have never gotten to overtime, but we did. But when you're talking about this, let's not forget it's, it, it was 10 of 12 won, the, the team that won the, that won the uh, uh, coin flip. But only 58% won on the first drive. So the other team got a chance. So you, you have a 58% chance. There'll be some kind of stat and data that will come out that, you know, whoever gets the ball first now, because the team that's going to win the toss is going to want to play defense so that they can see if the team kicks a field goal. So there's going to be some advantage. There always is. You can't make everybody happy. I'm with Mike Tomlin. I'm a purist. Let's go back to sudden death, move this thing on. But at the end of the day, this is what, this is what Mike T wants to see. All that quarterback money we're spending, let's give them both a chance to see how they play out. Meantime, if I'm Patrick Mahomes, I'm going, wait, timeout. Tom Brady threw an interception. It ended the AFC Championship game. I was going to the Super Bowl my first fall. Oh, wait, pre-snap penalty. I never touched the ball again, right? Why is it when Josh Allen doesn't touch the ball again, but I get it? Now, all of a sudden, there's a rules change? The one guy who That's should have right. a beef <laughs> is Patrick Mahomes. Guys, Today at the owners' meeting, Matt LaFleur detailed the reasons the Packers dealt star receiver Devontae Adams to the Raiders. Green Bay got a first and second round pick back. The Pack also lost receiver Marquez Valdez Scantling to the Chiefs in free agency. Here is Coach this morning. Those decisions are never easy to, to make. And unfortunately, it was one that 
you know, we had to come to. I, I think a lot of it was driven by by Devante. I would tell you, um, but you know, there's no sense in looking back on it. It's just we're moving forward. Jeff, I'm going to start with you because you're just going to start talking anyway. Your reaction to Matt LaFleur's <laughs> comments about how the Adams trade went down. He's super frustrated. Just look at his face, man. Look at the countenance. This guy didn't want Devontae Adams out of that building. He understands this team is not, clean, not nearly the same team without Adams. You think about one of the best tandems in the NFL between Rodgers and Adams. One of the most productive duos there is from a wide receiver and quarterback perspective. You're going to go find that in the draft? Maybe. You guess what? Aaron Rodgers, the, the most receiving, uh, a rookie receiving receptions they've had is 38. That ain't replacing Devontae Adams. You can go out and look for something else. He understands their team got weaker because Adams left the building. He wished they could have gotten that deal done first. I, th I think when you're talking about Devontae Adams, I would have franchised. I'd have kept him in the building. There's no way with where the Packers are, and it's a must-win and a win-now mentality. They don't have five years. You don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to retire next year. They were in a win-it-now mode. Losing one of your best players is never uh, a good formula trying to win a Super Bowl. Mike, Jeff makes a great point there. The Packers have been in win-it-now mode for a minute now, right? First, they draft Aaron Rodgers' replacement instead of a receiver for him, right? They waste time. They don't win the Super Bowl. Now more of the same. Devontae Adams, it's, how, Mike, do you replace Devontae Adams? They lost their two of their best guys, their best overall receiver, and their deep yep. threat. What do you do about that, Mike, when they're trying to win a Super Bowl now? You try to win for today and develop for tomorrow, and you do that by going to sign somebody like Odell Beckham Jr. And even though he's hurt, the verb we're using, guys, is, Odell, we are investing in you. So when we get to March of 2023, you can crush it in free agency. And whenever you're ready, November 1st, December 1st, we're going to put you out there. You're going to help us make a meaningful playoff run. And then in addition, with multiple first-round picks, we're going to draft Devontae Adams' long-term replacement, maybe someone like Jamison Williams, if they're lucky enough, someone that has... Uh, real rare explosion. So I'm trying to replace Devontae Adams two ways, and I completely agree with Jeff from this standpoint. It's wholly inconsistent to be all in on Aaron Rodgers contractually and let Devontae Adams leave the building. Jeff, yep. what do you think? Hold up. Mike, Mike, see, I got a question for you. I have heard you on many a show together what is the term and phrase we use? I don't like this. I didn't like how you just you just church this thing up. Tell the people what they have to do. What do they got to do, Mike T? We are scouring. scouring. We are going to scour, scour, yes. scour. Yes. And, 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 <laughs> and Max, really, if some GMs could have scoured better for offensive linemen, maybe Jeff could have gone a little bit earlier. <laughs> but a lot of people thought that Jeff could only play on Saturday, not Sunday. Story for another day. <laughs> Meantime, you see those returning receivers for the Packers? You talk about like a 1,000-yard receiver? Add it up, folks. It's under a 1,000 yards, the four guys returning. Yes, sir. They're trying to win a Super Bowl. Celtics lost to the Raptors 115-112 last night in overtime in Canada. The Celtics were without starters Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Al Horford in Toronto. Some big questions for the Celtics came up after the game. For more on that, Brian Windhorst joins us. What's going on, Wendy? How you doing, Max? Well, you tell me, uh, what's, the la what's the takeaway from the way the Celtics handled last night? 